In today's video, I'm going to talk about a Fidelity colony I caught out in the field. If I mentioned before, I do pest control with EcoSafe. And when I'm out at clients' homes, I have all these golden opportunities to look for ants because I know where to find them. So during my inspection phase, when I have not actually applied any substances or control materials, my hands are clean, I can look around. If I find an ant colony, I can collect it. I definitely go for it if I have time. In this case, all these little fellas, or gals, were under a pot. The whole colony was sitting right there. As soon as I pulled the pot open, I just picked it up really quick, took it back to the truck, and I had my manual aspirator tool, which I'll talk about in a moment, to suck all the ants up as quickly as I could. And I got a majority of all their brood and their queen. It was a pretty easy, quick collection. Fidella in particular like to nest sometimes under rocks and other roots or fallen logs. So if you're really quick and you flip one over and you got an aspirator and you can see their queens, sometimes they're polygynous, it's very easy to collect them in rapid succession and get a whole nest secured for you as opposed to having to dig around in the, in the soil, of course, and lose everything in the process. The tool that I used here to collect these ants is called a manual aspirator. If you've ever done any kind of insect collecting, this thing is practically your best friend. And if you love ant keeping, this is even better because it's mostly for small insects. Basically use a suction to suck up small insects to a certain degree. You have a tube over here to put your mouth on to pull with your lungs. And you have a metal piece on the side that has a very constricted tube that allows you to create a vacuum to collect small insects. Once they're inside, they're practically captured. When you pull the lid off here, you can see that they come to meet. But one side has a filter. This is very important that you don't lose this filter because if you do, you try to suck things up, you will get them straight up the tube into your mouth and that's not fun. If you're gonna be collecting ants with this, just know that if you're collecting ants that spray formic acid, you're going to get formic acid sprayed up your lungs. It's not necessarily gonna hurt you, but it's gonna be very vinegary and it's gonna be kind of nasty. When you're done, you collected your insects, you just simply remove the cap and then you put the proper cap on to seal it and you can replace the um, vial as well. And you're good to go all over again. Here we're dumping the ants into a Tar Heel Mini Hearth. I mentioned Tar Heel products in the past. 99% of my formicariums are Tar Heel, so I have a ton of these things laying around. They're very great for small starter colonies or fidelity because they're, of course, a small species. And they fit in there pretty well. And I put some flow on them, but as you can see, it did not 100% prevent them from getting out. I probably didn't let it dry long enough. That's my bad. But thankfully, just a few managed to walk out, but the rest are stuck in there. So everything's been dumped in there. They're going to attempt to move. They're going to try to figure out the best place to adjust the brood and the queen. And when they realize that the best place is down below, where it's nice and dark with a water tower, they'll make their move. Okay, so I kind of made the, the soil and sand level out a little bit, so they're more exposed, as opposed to having a little hill of dirt they can hide under, and a way just to encourage them to move a little bit faster. You can see the queen on the side of the plastic right there, kind of nosing around, not sure what to do, while the rest of the workers are scrambling to pick up brood and figure out where to go. But I'm pretty sure they'll figure this out pretty fast. Now they, by nature, they know exactly what they're doing most of the time, hopefully, <laughs> and uh, they figure out what's the best condition to be in. And since this took so long to occur, I just did a little time lapse for you. So in just a moment, you get to see it in high speed <laughs> and how this quickly took place.
All right, and here they are actually in the cavern portion of the Tar Heel Mini Hearth. The queen's there in the back near the edge of the water tower. So they're still kind of situating themselves, trying to figure out where to allocate everything. The brood, of course, is probably going to be primarily above the water tower where all the moisture is. And they just kind of continue to explore and figure out what's the best way to organize everything. Nest made up there in the back so they can drink on the water. And of course the sides are plugged because we don't want them pouring out the sides. They're a very small ant. Okay, here you can see they're a bit more organized. This is probably how they're going to be settled for the rest of the time that they're in the hearth. All their brood is very close to the moisture above the water tower, as is the queen. They're kind of huddled around it. In the wild, if you ever go collecting these ants, they do need a decent amount of moisture. So if you go, say, find a log that's you know, fallen on the ground, you're probably not going to find Fidelity in there if it's dried out and rotted. But if it is, of course, still wet, high in moisture, you'll probably find a colony between the bark or just between it and the soil. That's a good place to look. Or anywhere like a rock just sitting out in the middle, of, like, undisturbed by a tree. If it's really wet around that rock, it's probably good to flip it over and see what's underneath. Here's a colony's first food offering. So we've got the biformica feeder with the sunburst nectar in it. And we have a cricket. So if you've ever seen Fidoli eat before, you know that they're vicious protein scavengers. The large majors, which have the heads, which are really exaggerated compared to the workers, they go in, they rip things open, and the smaller workers run in and they just take everything they can, bit by bit. If you put any kind of protein source in with these ants, they will gut it and they will tear every bit off they can possibly find. And you come back to these empty husks of insects. Some other ants can't exactly do that, but with these groups, it's almost always, it's like, it's like piranhas. You, know, you put the food in there, there's practically nothing left for them to use. Whereas other ants, they don't necessarily use everything about the protein you can put in. Or they don't necessarily have the mandibles to do what they need to do like these ants do on their scale. And for entertainment, I've added some fruit flies to demonstrate how these ants hunt and how quickly they can work together to take down the fruit flies. So if you sit here and watch, you know, the remessin ants, they can sting. All it takes is one worker grabbing a fly, dragging it down, and getting a good sting, and then the rest of the ants just pile on top of them. <laughs> and as they subdue the fruit flies, they just drag them down the nest. It's cool to watch ants do the, a teamwork bringing things in, trying to get as many ants on a certain target as they can, and then move. And while they do try to work together, you see they're not always in sync. Sometimes like one ant decides they go running in the opposite direction of the nest, and they drag all their little sisters with them <laughs> until they figure out that they're going the wrong way, and they turn around and they actually bring the food back to the nest. It's always amusing to watch ants attempt to do these things. So I just want to sit back, just watch. There'll be some up closes later just to show you how these ants go about doing this. While we're sitting back watching the Fidelia, I just want to give you guys some updates. So we are working on another nest. The next nest I want to make is for the Pagana Myrmex. It's for Rugosis, which is a darker colored harvest ant we have here in Texas. I'm making that nest this weekend and we're going to try to record from beginning to end. I know a lot of you folks wanted to see how we actually pour the nest and do the molding, which I didn't get to do last time because I didn't think the record because we had failed so many times trying to get it to work. So we're going to show you how this actually occurs and how I've kind of figured it out through trial and error. 
I also have turtle ants that I'm trying to do videos for, but sometimes they don't exactly do very much. But recently they've done some interesting things, so maybe I can have enough content to put together to show you. And we'll get these videos out as soon as we can for you. And of course, if there's anything you'd like to see, you know, I have, I have honeypot ants, we have car carpenter ants everywhere. We have trap jaw ants actually as well. We have Nova Messer and a whole host of things, including Neopanera. And in fact, I'm actually going to be collecting new Neopanera queens next weekend down in Harlingen, Texas. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how many we get, and if fall is actually the time they come up for nuptial flights. And naturally, I'm going to try to record as much as I can about the actual collecting out in the field so you can see how it was done and what it actually looks like out there. Because collecting insects is a lot of fun. It's like an adventure. Everywhere you go, you never know what you're going to find or what to expect. So just be ready because nature has things to throw at you and you never know. <laughs> Hopefully you have what you need. If you don't, you improvise the best that you can. And as for what to expect for a schedule on videos... Keep in mind that I'm a professional entomologist that also does pest control, and I work for them as their entomologist full-time. So I'm not a full-time YouTuber. You're probably looking at me once a week for videos at best. So I understand some people want content more often than that, but I just don't have the time necessarily to put that all together. And I want to make things high quality as best as I can. I know I don't have the best editing software or best know-how about YouTube, but I want to make sure there's actually good video and good audio and good information for you. So just please, if you do want content more often, just understand and do my best to give you what's quality. If you enjoy this content and you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing. And I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.